So uh, good day everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, lecture under the topic uh, the nature of drug abuse and history. The nature of drug abuse and history. And uh, before we will proceed, I would like to uh, revisit particularly on the types of drugs. So it is understood that uh, before coming up with this lesson, most of you have submitted already your project, which is to explain and of course elaborate on the contents of the prescription. So let us first review. So in this lesson, we have uh, two types of drug that uh, are considered uh, both uh, legal and illegal. Okay, So let us first uh, consider uh, number one, prescriptive drugs. So it is understood that uh, antibiotics, for example, are uh, considered as prescriptive drugs. So they should be given and issued by any physician or any health professional before uh, a patient or somebody who is asked to buy or purchase it from a drugstore is given due uh, consideration. So uh, without uh, the written authorization from the doctor or any health professional, it is illegal or it is not allowed for any drugstore or any pharmacist to dispense such medicine. So th I, that is under prescriptive drugs. Okay, so the next one is the over-the-counter drugs or OTC. So this type of drugs can be bought or can be purchased from the drugstore without any prescription at all. So tablets or medicines for cough, colds, and fever uh, are considered under the OTC or over-the-counter drugs. So basically, someone or anybody can purchase under the age of 18 above as prescribed by law will be able to buy this type of medicine for common colds, cough, and fever. Okay, so with these types of drugs, uh, we therefore connect or revisit the lesson on self-medication. So normally when people are uh, sometimes hopeless or rely on information uh, from friends or people close to them, regarding what medicine to take self-medication takes place or self-medication happens but then it should be remembered that what may be effective for one person may be different from may have a different rather effect to the other person so there are uh, medical uh, considerations uh, that have to be uh, looked upon before taking uh, a certain type of medicine. So under the self-medication syndrome, um, there are dangers of uh, self-medication. Actually, you already have understood uh, some concepts on self-medication 
but allow me to enumerate the possible outcomes of self-medication. First is, uh, there are of course adverse reactions uh, towards the drug. Okay, example uh, is allergies that uh, can be classified as mild allergies to severe allergies. Okay, the second one is uh, the body uh, sometimes uh, if not immune to rather if already immune rather to a particular type of medicine there could be a little to no response okay so it's possible that there is a non-response of the patient to the drug due to um, incorrect drug usage okay remember that uh, when a physician issues or gives a patient prescription, there is a very specific dosage for the medicine to, uh, to be taken. Okay? Since it's, it is self-medication, it is understood that uh, the one taking the medicine uh, have no idea at all on the amount of the medicine to be taken. So, it is really considered as dangerous. Uh, number three, uh, there is also uh, a problem on uh, toxication or there is some level of toxic toxicity uh, with respect to overdosage, which may lead to severe reactions such as nausea vomiting, rashes, and etc. Okay? So, uh, number four, the last of uh, this uh, self-medication syndrome, um, when uh, a patient finds, it, finds the medicine effective, finds the medicine to be helpful, the effect could be uh, habitual or it, the effect could be habit forming so uh, and uh, sometimes uh, if the period of using the medicine takes a long time already the body becomes immune and sometimes the body looks for uh, other types of drugs to be taken okay and uh, especially when such drug is already taken for a longer period of time and its effect also sometimes uh, may not be felt by uh, the self-medicator, especially when such medicines are no longer needed. Okay, so that is under the self-medication syndrome. So... How do drugs work? That is the first uh, uh, question no, that to be asked. So, of course, as I have mentioned earlier, there are uh, certain dosages that a physician would indicate under the prescription. So, the first is uh, the minimal dose. Okay? So, let us define the amount needed to treat or heal, that is, the smallest amount of a drug that will produce a therapeutic effect. Okay, so this is uh, the first level of dosage, the minimal dose. The second is the maximal dose. Uh, from the word itself, it is defined as the largest amount of a drug that will produce a desired therapeutic effect without any accompanying symptoms of toxicity. So, though it's maximal already, if it is uh, issued or if it is demanded by a physician, it is still safe and uh, it is uh, guaranteed that there is no um, effect, uh, there is no toxicity. Okay? 
So the position is knowledgeable uh, on what medicine to to uh, to give or to issue or to prescribe, considering uh, the some physical uh, symptoms from the patient. Okay. So we have number three, which is toxic dose. The amount of drug that produces untoward effects or symptoms of poisoning. So that is one danger of self-medication. The patient might be taking it uh, incorrectly. So there will be symptoms of poisoning. That is toxic dose. The fourth one is abusive dose. It's the amount needed to produce the side effects and action desired by an individual who improperly uses it. Okay? So that will be considered under um, drug abuse already. And the fifth is the lethal dose. So the word speaks for itself. The amount of drug that will cause the end of life or death. Okay? So... Of course, from, from item number three, toxic dose, ab, ab, number four, abusive dose, and lethal dose, these are the three, the, these are mainly the three levels of dosage uh, and the definitions that will explain the dangers of self-medication. Okay, so the next subtopic is we ask, how drugs are administered okay so the most common uh, way of uh, taking a medicine is through the mouth so it is termed as oral medication it is considered the uh, fundamental or the basic uh, and the most convenient and economical route whenever possible okay so uh, that is oral medications. Uh, the medicine is taken through the mouth. So the second one is injection. Okay. So this form of drug administration offers a faster response than the oral method. It makes use of a needle or other device to deliver the drugs directly into the body tissue and blood circulation. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, intravenous fluid, the intravenous fluid like the dextrose, uh, of course, uses a needle to inject into a part, a part the body for a faster response. So the dextrose is one example of uh, an uh, uh, or the endravenous fluid is considered uh, one way of uh, uh, administering drugs. So the third one is inhalation. So this is a very uh, common method uh, when drug addicts uh, use uh, Metampetamine hydrochloride or shabu, for example, in that case. So it makes use of gaseous and volatile drugs which are inhaled and absorbed rapidly through the mucus of the respiratory tract. Okay? So you don't see any patient uh, inhaling drugs. Okay? For a normal illness okay so inhalation is such uh, is a manifestation that a particular drug is not allowed or illegal okay so number four let us proceed is topical okay? this refers to the application of drugs directly to a body site such as the skin and the mucous membrane okay Number five is iontophoresis. The introduction of drugs into the deeper layers of the skin, 
by the use of special type of electric current for local effect. Okay, so these are the five uh, types of administering drugs. So let us move further with the concept of toxicology. So, a drug may cause effects because of any of the following. The first is overdose. It's a common thing. When too much of the drug is taken, uh, and th there are, of course, extension of its effects. So, that is self-explanatory. The second is allergy. Okay. Some drugs cause the, the release of histamine, giving rise to allergic symptoms such as dermatitis. Okay. This refers to some disease in the skin, swelling, fall in blood pressure, suffocation, and death. Okay. So, uh, this uh, event, uh, may be uh, avoided uh, it is because there is a presence of or there are medicines that are antihistamine okay they uh, prevent allergic reactions to the body okay so your research on the meaning of antihistamines what are its benefits and its effects to the body the third concept of toxicology is idiosyncrasy. For unexplained reasons, morphine, okay, which sedates all men, stimulates and renders some women some uh, maniacal. Perhaps the phrase catty woman has pharma pharmacological basis since most mammals are sedated by morphine, but some cats become extremely excited by it. Okay, so let us just focus on the humans. So normally, uh, if you are watching uh, movies which requires uh, or which shows surgery, you may often hear the doctor or the surgeon or any operating uh, doctor or physician requiring the use or, the in or requiring... Uh, nurses to inject morphine before uh, to at least uh, relieve the pain regardless of the level uh, to a particular patient. Okay, so the next, the fourth concept of toxicology is general protoplasmic poison property. Drugs are chemicals and some of them have the property of being general protoplasmic poisons. Okay? So, drugs could be poisonous if used improperly. And especially if it is taken without the knowledge or without the authorization from a health professional and in, or in this case, a registered doctor of medicine like a pediatrician okay and the last number five is side effects some drugs are not receptors for one organ but receptors of other organs as well the effect in the other organ may constitute a side effect which is unwanted okay so I could give you a concrete example. So, medicine, particularly for uh, arthritis, uh, if taken periodically, if uh, patients who are suffering from arthritis uh, becomes habitual, in taking uh, medicines, especially for swelling foot or painful joints, uh, it has, of course, effects 
uh, especially on uh, the kidney okay so the the renal glands or the renal uh, part of the body is greatly affected so it affects the kidneys no? most medicines for arthritis um, and that is con are considered as um, prescriptive drug so no one is uh, issued or given medicines for arthritis unless with the consent from a physician because I repeat most of these arthritis medicines affect the kidneys okay so let us continue further with uh, the medical use of drugs so it is understood as always that the best use of medicine depends upon the physician okay it also it is also dependent rather on the user or patient and lastly the pharmacist so that this idea was subscribed to by both Metro Manila physicians according to the PNC Health Education Survey uh, 1983 and the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Washington, D.C. So that's uh, UPMAC DDB 1979. Okay, so their common agreements on the intelligent use of drugs are presented as following. So let us just explain this simply. The, second, the first is uh, the doctor should consider the, the patient's age, weight, age and weight, uh, the prevalent signs and symptoms, the severity of the disease, the results of laboratory examinations, the route of administration tolerated by patient, and presence of impairment in the organ or system. The physician, for this reason, will always have a reason for prescribing you a type of medicine. So it's not purely uh, luck or it's not purely uh, guessing okay just like what happens in self-medication so the doctor knows what he is doing and he has reasons beyond your understanding as a patient why he or she gives you the type of medicine and the particular dosage okay let's continue with uh, number two When taking prescribed medicines, remember carefully the dosage, the manner of administration, frequency, and time when to take it. So, a patient must not trust his memory when taking the medicine. So, it is important that before prior or prior to taking the medicine, the the indication should be read at least three three times okay so make sure that you are in good hands or you are taking the medicine correctly okay number three if patient goes to more than one doctor each one of them must know about all the drugs being taken so if you remember every time you uh, have consultation from a particular doctor the doctor or the physician or the health professional usually will ask you what medicines have you taken for this illness in the past and right after giving or right after revealing or telling the doctor honestly he or she may be able uh, to trace the history or the cause of such uh, disease or illness and of course uh, it is 
uh, your right as a patient to ask for second opinion. Okay, number four. Uh, of course, uh, it, it was explained already that one should avoid self-medication. Fifth is, uh, if there are untoward effects of the medicine, the patient should immediately or as soon as possible report uh, the symptoms uh, that develop or that results from uh, the medicine issued by a certain health professional. So, next is, next part of the agreement is the patient should not take other drugs or additional drugs without asking the physician. Okay, that's very clear. Number seven, uh, it is fun, a fundamental rule that the, every patient should uh, know the expiry date or should not take literally medicines that are expired already okay number uh, eight uh, every patient should not take medicines without label okay very clear number nine uh, medicine should be stored in a safe and cool dry place and of course out of reach of children so I think that is self-explanatory already. Number 10. So under self-medication, again, some people just buy or purchase or use common drugs without knowing their functions and contradictions. So thus, instead of being relieved of some symptoms, their, sim their conditions are aggravated. Physicians share the same opinion that the following drugs are better used under medical supervision to avoid harmful consequences and habit formation. Number 11, uh, medicines that relieve pain uh, or analgesics uh, may produce the opposite effects on somebody who suffers from peptic ulcer or gastric irritation. Okay. So number 12, uh, why do pharmacists require prescriptions for antibiotics? Because they combat or control infectious organisms. So taking or ingesting the same antibiotics for a long time can result in allergic reactions and cause resistance to the drug. So meaning resistance, meaning the body will no longer, uh, of course, absorb the drug and it has no effect on the illness at all. So, taking the medicine would be useless. Okay, that is one factor to be considered as a danger in self-medication. Then, let's proceed. Uh, Antipyretics can lower body temperature or fever due to infection okay so next antihistamines okay uh, control or combat allergic reactions people uh, who are on antihistamine therapy must not operate or drive vehicles since these drugs can cause drowsiness okay so uh, these, there are medicines that are, that are not to be taken, especially uh, for uh, under the classific under uh, jobs that are classified like driving or operating a machine or a vehicle, because they can cause uh, drowsiness that will lead to uh, being sleepy while at work. So it's very dangerous. So number fifteen. Contraceptives prevent the meeting of the egg cell and sperm cell. Okay, so this is, uh, of course, uh, classified as for uh, married people and, of course, those who are uh, practicing uh, 
having multiple partners at the same time. So there is, of course, a sexual relationship. So there are uh, medicines that uh, can cause uh, maybe infertility or uh, can cause irritability okay? and uh, can cause allergies to uh, people uh, who take or who use these contraceptives especially pills if not uh, administered or if not uh, allowed or authorized by a physician so moving further uh, decongestants now another classification of drugs relieve congestion of the nasal passages prolonged use of these decongestants might include nasal congestion upon withdrawal okay so uh, especially for uh, adult or children suffering from uh, colds okay so when you say nasal congestion you, have, you will have difficulty breathing through your nose because uh, of nasal congestion and overuse or the abuse of taking the congestions may lead to uh, of course uh, the negative effect of nasal congestion upon withdrawal or when you stop taking those type of medicine. So expectorants is the expulsion of mucus and phlegm from the lungs and the throat. In this case, uh, for cough medicines or syrups. They are not drugs of choice for the newborn that does not know to cough the phlegm out. Okay, so... Newborn infants or babies are never given expectorants. Okay? Uh, maybe they can be given uh, fluids uh, to release. Okay? Normally, the phlegm or mucus from the body, uh, but not expectorants. No? So, traditional parents usually just would of course, use their mouth to suck out the mucus from the nose of their newborns or from the news of, from the nose of their babies. And or of course, and uh, uh, another way is uh, of course uh, giving uh, infants or babies uh, other healthy and safe beverages. An error for them to uh, be relieved of cough. Okay, uh, let's proceed. Laxatives stimulate defecation and encourage bowel movement for people who have difficulty moving their bowel. Uh, and of course, it is to be noted that they are not given to pregnant women and those suffering from intestinal obstruction. So, the danger of taking or abusing laxatives is there might be uh, the possibility or probability of uh, the rupturing of the intestines or the appendix. Okay? So, it is very dangerous. Second to the last are sedatives and tranquilizers from the word itself uh, they cause or they, the purpose is to let patients be calm and quiet uh, to be relieved of anxiety without causing depression okay so precautions are taken before taking this type of medicines because they might impaired judgment and dexterity dexterity means the ability of the person to move his body especially the hands and the, uh, the, the feet okay. and the last one is the vitamins uh, and minerals and other food substances necessary for normal growth 
and development and proper functioning of the body. So, it is understood that aside from vitamins and other health supplements, it is always advised by physicians and doctor or doctors to eat healthy and nutritious foods. Okay? Apart from, of course, taking uh, or drinking eight glasses of water per day. Okay? So, uh, for purposes of uh, this discussion, I would like you to uh, read and review for the midterm examination the history of drug abuse. I will no longer discuss to you uh, everything for the midterm exam. I want you to review, read and review the history of drug abuse. Okay, and uh, that includes addiction, drug addiction in the Philippines. Okay, that's the coverage. The influences of drug abuse. The concept of drug addiction and the underlying causes or influences of drug abuse. Okay, the, including the biological factors and the common causation of drug abuse. Okay, so uh, I will repeat no, for further information. You will study the history of drug abuse for the second time. And under, under that... Uh, include the history of drug abuse uh, and addiction in the Philippines. So there is, the first one is the global history or the universal history of drug abuse. The second is uh, particularly the same topic in the Philippines. Okay, and including, of course, the influences of drug abuse and under which there is concept of drug abuse and the concept of drug dependence and the concept of drug addiction and their respective attributes. Okay? Underlying causes, lastly, the underlying causes or influences of drug abuse and under that, considering the subtopics under biological factors and common causation of drug abuse. Okay, so that's it for now. I would like to thank you for listening and understanding the topic okay, with uh, simple explanations. So study the following topics. Uh, my lecture, my previous lecture to you uh, on the previous lesson will be included in the midterm examination. So I want you to, of course, review your notes, particularly on uh, the terms of drug abuse. And of course, I will also uh, include there the, some of the jargons or uh, the street language, the jargons, uh, or the street language of drugs, and the terminologies that are used in drug abuse, uh, especially under Republic Act uh, 9165 or the Comprehensive uh, Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Okay, so uh, please uh, make sure to comply with your school obligations and uh, make sure that you are aware of the schedule 
during the examination. With that, thank you very much once again and good day.